Okay, today I'll be going over some of the most clueless moments Master Chef has ever seen. And this one right here had the nerve to talk back to the judges. Would they be able to overlook this disrespect? In the 11th episode of season 4, the top 13 cooks were given a mystery box challenge. The home cooks had to make a dish using different parts of a pig's head in 90 minutes. After 90 minutes, the judges chose Lin Chi, Jesse Lizyak, and Johnny Blanchard as the top 3 dishes. Lin served a braised pork cheek with Asian braised pork tongue. Next, Jesse served the cheek and ear with black eyed peas. Meanwhile, Johnny served a tongue and cheek taco. Lin's dish was chosen as the best one, which meant that he was safe for the night. During the elimination test, Christine Ha, winner of MasterChef Season 3, was invited as a guest. Since Lin was the winner, he was presented with three of Christine's favorite ingredients, catfish, chicken, and Dungeness crab. He also got the advantage of deciding which contestant would be cooking what. He was asked to pick one contestant who would use the same ingredient as him while the other would use another. Since he was safe, he now had an opportunity to knock someone out by picking a difficult ingredient to work with. And well, this is the contestant that he picked. I think it might have to be Chrissy, but she has this confidence that I think no one else really has. So what ingredient did he choose? I have to say, Lin played it smart by going for this. Catfish. I don't know if they have many catfish in South Philly. As for the rest of the home cooks, Lin picked the most obvious ingredient being Dungeness crab. I mean, he would have been the dumbest guy had he picked the third ingredient that was left on the counter. And I'm really glad that he didn't. When Chrissy saw her protein, she was all irritated about it and this is what she had to say. You, you just with the wrong girl. This challenge wasn't going to be an easy one. Before the challenge even started, Christine upped the difficulty level by adding in blindfolds. Now, the home cooks had one hour to cook a stunning dish with blindfolds on. The challenge was really chaotic with everyone dropping things one after another. And then Chef Ramsay revealed something that put a smile on everyone's face. Christine has a very cruel sense of humor. Take your blindfolds off. <laughs> oh my god. Whew, what a relief. But this didn't mean the challenge was going to be any easier. When Joe and Chef Graham went to Chrissy's station to see what she was cooking, they were shocked. She made mashed potatoes and was cooking the fish very oddly. Joe asked her if the food was like survival food, to which Chrissy replied by saying it was southern catfish. Hearing this, when Joe compared it to Philly-style catfish, Chrissy became very defensive and said this. It's fried catfish with some mashed potatoes and asparagus. Joe was disappointed with Chrissy's choice of dish. She was among the top 13 after all. But rather than questioning her choice and upping her game, she started arguing, which pissed Joe off. All he was doing was trying to tell her to not play it safe, but Chrissy couldn't keep her mouth shut. And well, Joe left her station by saying this. Well, I'm the one that matters anyway, what I think, so. Honestly, Joe isn't someone who gets mad very easily, so this whole thing that went down didn't look very good for Chrissy. This one move could be her ticket out of the competition, and it looked like Lynn's decision was paying off. One hour later, Chrissy was the first contestant to have her dish judged. And just like she said earlier, she presented fried catfish with bacon cheddar mashed potatoes and asparagus. The first thing Chef Ramsay did after seeing this dish was describe it to Christine, and this is what he said. Looks like a TV dinner. But wait, did Chrissy actually leave the skin on the fish? Was that out of laziness, or did she just leave it on intentionally? Either way, this was gonna backfire because catfish skin can be as hard as a snake's and nobody wants to eat that. Chef Ramsay had to actually take the skin off before he could taste the fish. And as a result of that, most of the seasoning she added to the fish was stripped away. But listening to the arrogance in her tone, Chef Ramsay said this. Are you cooking for the judges tonight to stay in this competition, or are you cooking for yourself again? As for the taste, Christine found the dish to be a little too earthy and catfishy. She added that it needed a little more elevated flavor. Meanwhile, Chef Ramsay found the dish to be way too fatty since she left the skin on. Chef Graham was also disappointed with the dish. But when Joe tasted Chrissy's dish, this is what he did. Joe found the flavor to be too muddy. Referring to the conversation he had earlier with her at her station, Joe said this with a stern voice. You think you know it all? Then go cook it all yourself at home. However, when Chrissy became defensive yet again, Joe got really pissed. You're wasting my time, and I don't like to have my time wasted. For me, you're done. He then complimented Lynn for showing him who was really there to play. Chrissy, however, wasn't ready to bow down in shame. As she was heading back to her station, she claimed that her catfish was delicious and that everyone was just jealous of her. But just as she was praising her own dish, Joe happened to overhear her statements and this is what he said. I have the balls to say it up here in front of me. 
It's no surprise that Chrissy's dish was in the bottom three, along with Luca Monfis and Beth Kirby's. However, the judges showed us that they were fair when they voted for Beth's dish as the worst among the three. However, if we're being honest, it was Chrissy's attitude that was the worst by far. Almost everyone expected it to be Chrissy's last day, but it was Beth who left the competition that night. By far, when it comes to attitude, Chrissy's known as one of the worst contestants on Master Chef. She always got into arguments and never accepted her mistakes. Moreover, she couldn't even take criticism, and worst of all, she was a bully. Strong words to use, don't you think? But, well, that's exactly what she was in the 14th episode. The red team had to face the pressure test after losing the team challenge. Before the test commenced, Chef Ramsay asked Savannah Sturges, who was the weakest performer. So, she reluctantly named Chrissy, and when Chef Ramsay asked Brie Couture, she also named Chrissy. After that, Chef Ramsay announced that only four members would be participating in the pressure test and the one who wouldn't compete would be chosen by the red team. They only had 5 minutes to discuss, and during their discussion, things escalated between Brie and Chrissy. As they began to discuss their problems, Chrissy complained about being singled out as the weakest performer by the red team. Hearing this, Brie told her to stop taking it so personally, but Chrissy wasn't ready to back down. Now, no way. Three times I told you that I didn't think it was a good idea to see No, you them. didn't. Chrissy was stubborn and put the whole blame on Savannah. And when Savannah still tried to point out what she said during the challenge, Chrissy started cursing. Brie then had enough of Chrissy's attitude and things got really out of hand. You too, I dude. didn't say Who were you? What did you I do didn't on say the team? It was a Chrissy then threatened to punch Brie if she didn't shut up, but Brie stood up for herself. You can't sit here and talk to me like an adult. All you ever want to do is hit everyone in the Yo. face. The team then chose Jordan Roots to save face, and as a result, Luca, Brie, Savannah, and Chrissy were put in the pressure test. They ultimately hoped that Chrissy would finally get eliminated because everybody was sick and tired of her attitude. So it was the first team challenge of season 6, and what was on the menu? Hamburgers with onion rings and coleslaw, plus a fish and chips dish, all for the hungry crowds at Knott's Berry Farm. But here's the kicker, there were no set number of diners. Whoever happened to walk through that gate needed to be fed by both teams. And to spice things up a bit, every guest had the chance to cast their vote for the winning dish. So, there was Dara leading the charge for the blue team. But right from the get-go, the blue team found themselves without much of a rhythm. Now here comes the craziest part. With just 10 minutes left on the clock, not a single portion of fish had even gone anywhere near a pan. How many portions you got cooked, Katrina? None! None. Blue team! Yes. There's no fish cooked! Chef Ramsay immediately rounded up the blue team to give them a stern warning. This is insane! No fish cooked! He was so livid that he straight up told Dara to do this. Look at me. Yes, we just cut to the chase and go straight to a pressure test. This is insane! Uh-huh. It was beyond clear that she wasn't up for the challenge. And so, she was asked to head straight to the pressure test. Now, with Dara effectively put in a timeout, Claudia had to step in to rescue the fish station, and she eventually managed to nail it. But what this next home cook did is probably the most extreme kind of cheating I've ever seen on MasterChef. As you may know, Season 12 brought back some culinary veterans for an all-star showdown, including some junior contestants too. But here's the burning question. Did the home cooks learn from their past mistakes? Well, they were about to find out. And what better trial by fire than having to feed the US Coast Guard? I mean, can you even imagine the pressure? Now, each team was tasked with preparing a hearty meal for over 100 hungry servicemen and women. The blue team, consisting of cooks from seasons 1 to 7, faced off against the red team, featuring home cooks from seasons 8 to 11. Alejandro stepped up as the captain for the red team, while Christian led the charge for the blue team. And the stakes? Well, one person from the losing team would face elimination. So, the red team kicked things off with some stakes. But hold up, Chef Ramsay caught wind that they were serving up cold cuts. The tray's cold, the steak's cold. I'm not gonna let you just send town. Not exactly the kind of hot start they were aiming for, right? Of course, Chef Ramsay, being the guy that he is, wasn't pleased. He made sure that they turned up the heat with some very choice words. And in a wild twist, he shuffled the Coast Guard over to the blue team's turf instead. But guess what? The blue team wasn't doing much better either. We have no mash. Oh my god. The mashed potatoes were still cooking, and Chef Ramsay's frustration, well, oh, it was practically radiating through the screen. Despite it all though, the initial feedback the diners gave seemed surprisingly positive for both teams. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that either. Anyway, in the midst of serving up food for the Coast Guard, a raw steak made an unwelcome appearance, and Chef Ramsay, in pure Ramsay fashion, did this. Oh, 
Oh man. Well, thankfully, the fish were probably gonna appreciate that much more than the Coast Guard. But brace yourself for the real shocker of the afternoon. Alejandro, undeterred by the steak now sleeping with the fishes, decided to play a risky game. He picked up a tray of steaks that had fallen down onto the floor by mistake and tossed them right back onto the grill. They're gonna get cooked. Seriously, how dumb could you be? Well, apparently, it was enough to kill the bacteria it picked up from the floor. At least according to our man Alejandro. So, no harm, no foul, right? Uh, I shouldn't even need to mention Chef Ramsay's reaction to this. You think I'm gonna keep you as a captain? I stuck them on the grill because I thought I'd kill the bacteria! Yeah, there was no coming back from that tongue lashing. Anyway, one user pointed out how Alejandro didn't learn one thing since his last stint on the show. Two of his teammates told him that the meat wasn't done and that it was too rare and were even proven right and yet all he said to them was trust me, trust me. This guy just doesn't listen. And then there was the whole drop steak thing. Anyway, with the chaos reaching epic proportions, Chef Ramsay took the opportunity to fire Alejandro as the team captain and appointed Michael to take charge instead. Just when the red team was careening over the edge of disaster, Chef Ramsay's quick thinking of appointing a better leader saved the day. Uh huh, the man is built for that kind of thing. But most of the time, those warnings of his fall on some real deaf ears. And the result is never good. Well, what happened in Season 4, Episode 5 was the absolute epitome of that. The challenge was that the contestants had to form teams and whip up a feast for a bunch of pint-sized food critics. Now, Jordan took the reins of the captain of the blue team and was tasked with satisfying the taste buds of an entire elementary school. I'm sure all of you with kids can understand how tall of a task that is. In his lineup, he recruited Adriana, Kathy, Howard, Johnny, Savannah, Eddie, James, and Chrissy. Looking like a dream team, right? Well, on paper you'd think so. Anyway, what exactly was their mission, you ask? It was to create a menu that included turkey meatballs with pasta, green beans, and an apple crisp for dessert. Sounds delicious, right? But wait, 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 hold on. Even before things really got going, Chef Ramsay had some major doubts. How many meatballs per portion? We'll probably be right, right around two. If it's gonna be so short, we'll check the- balls. So two balls. Yeah. I mean, feeding 300 kids? That's a whole lot of meatballs. We're talking about a thousand or more, minimum. Chef Ramsay knew that there was no way a bunch of amateurs could figure that out, especially with a time crunch looming over them. 600 yeah. meatballs are gonna make? 600 meatballs. Oh my god. The pressure was on, the clock was ticking, and you couldn't help but wonder, would the blue team somehow be able to pull off this miracle? Well, I wouldn't be talking about it right now if they did, would I? The blue team stumbled right out of the gate, starting fashionably late. Guys, we just started making meatballs. 20 more to get to 600 meatballs. And amidst the chaos, Chrissy, with some kind of culinary sixth sense, saw the impending catastrophe as well. The time it's taken us making all these meatballs is just stupid. I mean, that's not a superpower or anything, it's just basic knowledge a chef should have. Or like, basic math skills. Hopefully those kids were being taught better than them. Meanwhile, the judges, who were eagerly awaiting a feast, were dumbfounded by the sluggish progress of the blue team. More than 600 meatballs were on the line, and the team's sluggish speed wasn't exactly moving things along. As the clock kept ticking, the blue team found themselves in a very tough situation where they shockingly couldn't make all those meatballs. And in a desperate attempt to salvage this sinking ship, a tactical shift was in order and it needed to come fast. We need to start diversing and someone step up and take responsibility. Meanwhile, Chef Ramsay was completely livid. With every passing minute, his tolerance dwindled further and further. And that's when Jordan came into the picture, and well, he had a weird solution. In a light bulb moment, he decided to switch gears and whip up some meat sauce instead. We're just gonna do a meat sauce. Don't even, hey, you don't need to roll them anymore. But guess what? Things were about to get real saucy. With barely a minute left on the clock, the green beans were still having some major issues. One minute to go. Bean salad, I need it ASAP. But they were really just a symptom of the bigger issues at hand. In the grand scheme of these unfortunate events, a trifecta of poor decisions, a dash of terrible teamwork, and a generous sprinkle of abysmal leadership, the teammates crumbled under the pressure like never before. However, what happened in this next episode will make you question everything you know about the basics of cooking duck. Okay, so stick with me for a second because Sean and Katie had their sights set high. Together, they decided to whip up scallops for the appetizer and duck breast for the main course. And let's be real, these proteins are no walk in the park at the best of times. They're both real fickle in terms of timing. But well, how else could they prove their worth? 
So these contestants decided to go all in with this huge risk, hoping for some huge rewards on the other end of this challenge. So Junie took the helm for the blue team, while Julia commanded the red team. This was a strategic move that added an extra layer of unpredictability to the kitchen showdown. And once they stepped into the cooking tent, it was game on. The planning commenced and things got real strategic real quick. Julia faced a bit of resistance to her menu ideas initially, but like a true captain, she held her ground and rallied her team's support. Now, Chef Ramsay was on a mission to check the red team's progress. Little did he know he was about to uncover a disaster the likes of which he'd only seen on Kitchen Nightmares before. Stop! Turns out the team had seasoned the duck before cooking it, a move that even the rookiest of rookies know spells disaster. Salt pulls moisture out of things after all. And Chef Ramsay's fury reached new heights when he figured out what they'd done. We never season them until you cook them. Because when you hit the pan, there's going to be watery. Would the red team recover from this seasoning setback, or would they serve up a ducking disaster? Well, you'll need to wait for an upcoming video of mine to find out. But for now, nothing could prepare me for this bizarre wait. Get a cloth and dry them. Get rid of the seasoning quickly. Yeah, it was one of those kind of moves that would make Chef Ramsay question his life choices. Now, imagine what would happen if a clueless contestant decided it was time to get dirty. This time, they had to cook for a bunch of off-duty firefighters, real American heroes. Let's hope to God they don't screw it up. Now, their challenge was to whip up a 10-ounce New York strip steak from Walmart, and this wasn't just any meat. It was USDA certified, and only 1 in 5 steaks made the cut for being called Walmart Choice Premium Beef. But hold up, there's more. They also had to come up with this. You'll need to make two side dishes using the fresh Walmart produce you see here, which includes carrots, bell peppers, zucchini, mushrooms, and asparagus. And oh, don't forget a killer sauce for that steak. Blatant product placement aside, they had an hour and a half to cook up some mind-blowing dishes. And let me tell you, it wasn't your regular buffet. It was a full-on banquet, with waiters treating these heroes like kings. However, in 90 minutes, one team would come out on top, and the other would be dealing with a nasty pressure test. The red team was brainstorming and planning their menu together. But in the blue kitchen, Bethy took charge and made all the decisions. I want you on the grill, you on the grill. Bethy decided to whip up some potatoes with red peppers and throw in either chimichurri or a balsamic reduction sauce to pair with the steak. But hold up, they hadn't even settled on which sauce to go for. Just then, Chef Ramsay walked in to check on them, and what he saw blew his mind. What's the sauce? I'm gonna create two different sauces, a reduced balsamic sauce, and I'm gonna do a classic chimichurri. You only want one sauce. He was mad as hell. They were wasting time and ingredients making two sauces instead of focusing on one. This is when Chef Ramsay called Bethy over, demanding an explanation. What sauce are you serving? I'm debating between two sauces. Okay, so you don't know what you're doing. Unbelievable. What a freaking waste. While Chef Ramsay was about to lose it, take a look at her attitude. I promise you it's gonna be one stunning sauce. Well, Bethy just couldn't care less and totally ignored his advice. Finally, Bethy promised to go with one sauce, and this is when I started to actually think she pulled through. But wait, 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 hold up. Chef Ramsay spotted a massive problem on the blue team that could totally mess up their chances in the challenge. If you're wondering what it was, well, check this out. We've got 101 firefighters coming in for lunch. There's not even a steak seared yet. I mean, seriously? They hadn't even started yet? But the drama didn't stop there. Once the guests showed up, the blue team started serving up their dishes like pros, while the red team struggled like a bunch of amateurs. But here's the real kicker. The blue team made some ridiculous mistakes and sent out a plate without one of the most crucial ingredients. You didn't get into the chimichurri sauce. All right, hold on a second. Let me go get you some. Could you believe it? They forgot to serve the damn sauce. Seeing this, Joe obviously lost his mind and gave the blue team a reality check to get their act together. Come on! Move your ass and make another plate. Do I speak English? Eventually, the blue team was actually the first to finish the service, but that didn't guarantee anything. It was up to the firefighters to decide which team served the best dish. And guess what? With 68 out of the 101 votes, Bethy and her team totally crushed it. Hey, maybe Chef Ramsay was onto something about them needing to focus on a single sauce. Either way, after the rocky start they had, I never saw the blue team pulling off a win. What do you think though? Well, I think after a point, how you deal with pressure is all that matters. And if you agree, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications.
By the way, don't forget to visit all my social media pages to check out more amazing content from me. Anyway, speaking of chefs who messed up, there was one contestant who totally ignored Chef Ramsay's warning. And what followed next was chaos. You've gone backwards. So in episode 5 of season 2, Christian Collins, Susie Singh, and Jenny Kelly scored the top 3 best dishes. The final dish chosen was Jenny's masterpiece, savory salmon tart with caramelized fennel and shaved asparagus. The judges, including Joe, were throwing some good words her way. The creamy ricotta underneath gives it that nice moist mouth feel. An uncommon Joe W right there. But really, who wouldn't be impressed about making something out of nothing, right? Anyway, after the judges deliberated, they declared Christian the winner of the challenge. Now, here's the kicker. He got the privilege to be the first contestant to raid the MasterChef pantry and pick the ingredient or style of food that everyone had to cook within the elimination test. But the theme for the test was still up to the judges. Now, the theme of today's elimination test is the cuisine of Europe. They laid it on Christian that the theme would be the cuisine of Europe, and he had to choose between Spanish, French, and British cuisine. And here's what Christian chose. Vive la France! But then, Chef Ramsay dropped some really good news for our guy here. You don't have to cook anything. You are safe from elimination. All he had to do now was watch the others sweat it out in the kitchen. Now, for the rest of the crew, it was crunch time. They had just one hour to flex their skills or risk getting the boot from Master Chef. While absolutely everyone was feeling the heat, let's focus in on Jenny. Do you have any heavy cream I can borrow? This is all I'd like to take that. Thank you! Remember her from the mystery box top three? Yeah, she was hoping to repeat her success. And this is where things got interesting. Now, Jenny decided on a trio of soups, cream of mushroom, French onion, and zucchini. But here's the thing, Chef Ramsay was getting real worried. Why would you do three soups and not just one stunning soup? Um, when I've been to Paris, I love to go to bistros and see what the soup of the day is, yep. and these are three of my favorites. Right. I mean, makes sense, right? Why serve three decent soups when you can nail one? But did Jenny exactly heed his advice? Nope, she went full steam ahead with her triple soup extravaganza. Now, how do you think that turned out? Was it a genius idea or a disaster? Well, you do know what the title of this video is, so let's see what Chef Ramsay has to say, I guess. The onions aren't cooked properly. And also, you know, when you caramelize those onions, you finish them off with some mustard in there first, so it really brings the heat up. Next in line was Joe, and at first, his reaction seemed pretty decent. But then the plot thickened, and his comments took a strange turn bordering on disrespectful. These, these really are not even soups, quite frankly. These are like purees. These are like baby food. I mean, calling it baby food, seriously? Poor Jenny must have felt like she hit rock bottom there. Jenny came this close to being eliminated, but thanks to her incredible performance in the mystery box challenge, she managed to hold on to a little good faith. Just enough to keep her going for a little while longer. But here comes an instance where a dream team tore into each other, becoming each other's nightmares. Well, let me break it down for you. So, in the 10th episode of season 9, the top 15 home chefs were paired for a new challenge. And guess what? You can choose your own partners. But of course, of course, there was a twist. As it turns out, they could actually choose their partners. With chicken, carrots, onion, bacon, and cornmeal on the menu, they had just 45 minutes to whip up a dish. Plus, they could raid a fully stocked pantry for extra ingredients. Now, Ashley Mincy and Taylor Waltman ended up together, and they were pretty hyped up about it. I know that having her as a partner is going to be stellar. They brainstormed and nailed down exactly what they were going to make with the ingredients. But this is where Chef Ramsay got really worried. I think personally, they're too friendly. They might not want to say that tough thing to one another. Or correct one another. Exactly. That's what I'm worried about. You see, being friends can actually be a challenge. The famous chef figured they might not call each other out on their mistakes. But hey, it is a competition, so let's see how long that friendship would hold up. So what happened is, sometime later when Chef Ramsay checked on Ashley and Taylor, he straight up hated their dish. Why are you doing things testing them? They've never tasted before. He called it ridiculous and couldn't even help wondering if Ashley was even thinking. And what was her comeback? Check this out. Is it for visual or is it for flavor? I've never done it before, Chef. I wanted to taste it first. Seriously? In a competition? Chef Ramsay had to set her straight. But that's when something caught Chef Ramsay's eye that left him beyond shocked. 
Who mauled this? Both Ashley and Taylor were frozen. Finally, Ashley owned up to it, admitting that it was her fault. But that definitely wasn't enough to relieve Chef Ramsay's worries. I twisted it out of the joint. Do you know how to break down a chicken? Yes, Chef. He went off on them, and the tension escalated very quickly. I've seen better performances than Junior Master Chef with eight-year-olds. Okay, now let's fast forward to the judgment time. Ashley and I were definitely not on the same page, and it is completely coming through on this plate. Ashley and Taylor had dished up something fancy sounding, pan seared chicken, sauteed carrots and bacon, and cornbread cake. And Chef Ramsay didn't pull any punches. Why puree baby carrots? You could eat them freaking raw. He straight up called them dysfunctional and messy. Watching both of you work is like chewing gum with a mouthful of nuts. And just like that, the blame game kicked off. They started arguing instead of owning up to their mistakes. At this point, Chef Ramsay was over and done with their nonsense. Two smart, talented girls, and look at the result. Now here comes the big question, did their dish taste good at all? Well, let's ask Chef Ramsay himself. The cornbread is dry, it's crumbly, and out of all those carrots, that's what I've got, and they're bitter. But in spite of it all, the blame game was still going strong. I started to cut it, and then Ashley was like, don't cut it that way, so she cut right into it. Oh my lord. Long story short, they were both mega embarrassed for letting Chef Ramsay down. As for the famous chef, well, he didn't take it well either. But right now, with these two guys standing behind me like that, I look the biggest idiot in this kitchen. Now, let's dive into the juicy drama Season 1, Episode 11, Served Up, where a surprise nobody saw coming dropped. So, in this episode, things went south for one home cook in particular. Everyone was so pumped up to dig into some delicious creations when Whitney decided to throw a curveball. She confidently served up a pan-seared sculpin with a little something extra. Curious about the twist? Drum roll, please! Um, I actually used the tomatoes out of the can. Yeah, so Whitney spilled the beans, or should I say, the canned tomatoes. You could practically see the excitement draining off of their faces when that little revelation dropped. To make matters worse, none of them were even interested in tasting the dish anymore. And Whitney totally picked up on that vibe. Thank you. Well, you gotta hand it to her. Whether it was a bold move out of ignorance or just plain insanity, Whitney shook things up with those canned tomatoes. So, even though Ramsay gave the stink eye to canned stuff, Whitney threw caution to the wind and went for it. The critics, though, they were far from impressed. And it didn't start and stop at the tomatoes. The whole dish felt off. The garlic is overpowering. I can't really taste the fish because there's so much garlic in my mouth. Now, brace yourselves. Despite the critics giving her a reality check, Winnie was grinning ear to ear about what she had played it. But seriously, did she even taste it before loading it up with garlic and salt? Okay, now time to unveil the scores. To face the pressure test with a score of 5 out of 12, that person is Whitney. She barely scraped together 5 points. Yep, that's it. Looking back, the critics were almost too kind. I almost thought Chef Ramsay would kick her out right then and there. But that does not mean he let her off easy. He straight up called Whitney out on her decision. Why tell the harshest critics anywhere in the world today that you're serving them canned tomatoes? But Whitney, she just stood there poker-faced. It was like trying to decode if she was handling it like a champ or if there was a whole storm brewing inside her head. Did she forget she was in the big leagues? Sure, she was upset, but even with Chef Ramsay breaking it down for her, it seemed like she missed the memo on what the actual problem was. But anyway, no, I'm just gonna fight back because tomorrow I'm not going home. However, there was still a silver lining. Whitney gained some overnight fans. Instead of wallowing in self-pity, she got back on her feet and kept going. If that isn't admirable, I don't know what is. But this next contestant made an unexpected mistake that got her disqualified. At just 21 years old in MasterChef Season 7, Andrea Gallen brought a burst of energy as the youngest contestant in the room. Despite her fiery personality wreaking havoc more than a few times, Andrea proved herself by winning multiple challenges, setting high expectations. So, during Episode 10 in the 100 Farmers Challenge, Andrea landed on Diamond's red team, which unfortunately lost with just 20 votes out of 101. And the consequence was facing the dreaded pressure test. During the blue team's rescue mission, they saved Nathan, leaving Andrea and Terry in the danger zone. 
And this was the reason why they didn't save Andrea. Andrea is going to go in and kill whatever we're doing right here. She's going to be in the top 10 regardless. Confident in their abilities, the blue team believed that Andrea and Terry would secure spots in the top 10. However, after Nathan was saved, Andrea looked super annoyed. The blue team is only saving Nathan because they know he's a weaker chef and that they can get him out later. In the heat of the sausage challenge, Christina laid down the law. You'll all have to grind and case your own sausage. Please, head to your station. And that's not all. The contestants needed to have their sausages in a bun at the front table within 60 minutes. Andrea, guided by her culinary vision, crafted a bratwurst with beer, butter, caramelized onions, and a currywurst ketchup on pretzel roll, aiming to represent her love for global flavors as a traveler. However, with less than a minute left, Andrea did this. Andrea, move! Yep, she threw a curveball by putting her sausage back in the pan. This prompted urgent pleas from the judges and even fellow contestant Tenoria to hustle. In the final five seconds, chaos ensued as Andrea struggled to make it to the front table with everyone shouting at her to speed up. Andrea, you've got to be oh, down here! Oh, I did not even... After arriving a few seconds late, Andrea, visibly uncertain, admitted her mistake. I was so focused on getting my sausage in a bun perfect that I completely forgot to walk to the front. Anyway, Andrea faced the judgment as the third contestant to present her sausage in a bun. Chef Ramsay inquired about her sausage recipe, and she revealed a mix of a pound and a half of pork shoulder, a pound of veal, and a half a pound of fat. And after tasting her dish, this is what he had to say. Young lady, here, sausage is still glistening. That is beautiful. He noted the moistness of the dish and cut it into slices to showcase its glistening texture. Believe me, he was impressed by the glizzy. Chef Ramsay generously shared the slices with the other contestants, praising Andrea for her spot on seasoning and commending her meat grinding skills. Eric and Terry joined the chorus of approval, labeling it as delicious. But that wasn't the end of it. What Chef Ramsay said next was one of the highest honors anybody's ever received on MasterChef. I think that's gonna be one in my book. Really good job. Thank you, Chef. Delicious. Thank you. Wow. Wow, crazy. Imagine your creation being featured in Chef Ramsay's book. Brandy, who had earlier doubted Andrea's top 10 worthiness, conceded that not saving her only made her shine brighter. However, at the end of it all, it appeared Diamond might be on the chopping block, and here's why. That's it. That's the end. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. I'm going home. But things got twisted. During the deliberation, it all came down to Andrea instead. I don't think we could have made it any more clear. Listen, she had the best sausage of the night. Christina stressed the importance of following the rules, but Chef Ramsay tried to defend Andrea, arguing that she had the best sausage. And when the judges finally returned, Chef Ramsay dropped some big news. The person who is unfortunately going home tonight did not have the worst dish. Guess who got the boot? We were forced to watch the last 10 seconds and sadly did not adhere to that rule. Chef Ramsay emphasized that rules, unfortunately, were rules, and Andrea's late arrival, as seen in the last 10 seconds of the challenge, sealed her fate. Andrea then became the second person in MasterChef history to be disqualified for failing to adhere to the time limit. What happened next was heartbreaking. <laughs> I am so sorry. Rules are rules, and we have to abide by them on a daily basis. Chef Ramsay lamented that one of the most talented and inspiring young chefs wouldn't advance to the top 10. Andrea, in tears, admitted her mistake. I messed up. <sighs> in a bittersweet farewell, Andrea received a montage of her journey. It emphasized that not being in the kitchen anymore didn't matter as much as knowing what she wanted to do and who she wanted to be. A poignant exit for a promising chef. But here comes an instance where one contestant's arrogance took the center stage. In Season 9, Episode 11, Mark practically blew the doors down with his arrogance, and you have to see why. I made it better over this way. It's faster, a double boiler takes too long. You have plenty of time. Do you want to make it right? The dude straight up brushed off Aaron's wisdom on crafting the perfect Bernays sauce. Yeah, like he wasn't standing in front of one of the greatest chefs of our generation. Bad move, my friend. Bad move. And just to add a little more spice to the mix, he defended his own speedy approach, claiming that there's no right way to do things. Even someone like Joe tried to drop some knowledge about the importance of technique, but Mark wasn't willing to hear him out either. 
However, Chef Ramsay's intervention was yet to come. I'm gonna stop you now. 10 years of doing this competition, I'm not gonna be responsible for sending undercooked egg yolks. The famous chef finally let loose, and boy, did he have a lot on his mind. When he pointed out Mark's undercooked egg yolks, he made it crystal clear how disappointed he was. It was like the weight of the entire 10-year MasterChef legacy just dropped on Mark's shoulders. Hold on though, because the elimination test didn't go much better when Mark's attitude was thrown into the mix. Now brace yourselves. Five, four, three, two, one. Well, Mark, for whatever reason, decided to toss in some strawberries at the last minute. And apparently, he wasn't caught up on his physics homework because he didn't seem to anticipate at all that their water would leach out and flood the rest of the dish. But wait, 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 there was way more chaos to come. Struggling with the ticking clock, Mark fumbled and failed to get all the cupcakes in the box. Now imagine how Chef Ramsay felt. Uh-oh. I don't have all my cupcakes in the box. Wow. Talk about making a bad situation worse. Mark thought that a bit of laughter would magically fix everything, but Chef Ramsay's disappointment was hovering above Mark's head. Even as Chef Ramsay laid down the critiques, Mark stood his ground claiming that his confidence was being mistaken for arrogance. The home cook leaving this kitchen, Mark. In the end, Mark's departure was inevitable. The Master Chef kitchen just wasn't big enough for his ego. Now, could you think of more times when chefs messed up on Master Chef? Let me know in the comments section down below. Also, don't forget to check out my latest video right here since it's even crazier.